Homelessness is rising in America. According to the Department of Housing and Urban Development, at the start of 2020, nearly 600,000 Americans lived on the streets or in shelters. And that was before the pandemic. For those without permanent homes, access to food, health care, and a hot shower can be a daily struggle. But a community of homeless people in Oakland, California, came up with a solution. Here's CNBC's Kate Rogers. If you look past the dusty roads, piled up cars and garbage, RVs and makeshift shelters under Oakland's Interstate 880, you'll find something unexpected. There's a communal kitchen, hot shower, health clinic, free store and campfire, where open mic pizza parties are held for the unhoused residents of the Wood Street encampment. It's called Cobb on Wood. The idea sprung up thanks to organizers like SoChill Bernadette Moreno, and local groups, essential food and medicine, and artist building communities, along with input from residents. We believe that the residents themselves are the ones that have the solutions and have the answers. They're already doing it. We just need to stop criminalizing people for not having a home. A GoFundMe page for Cobb on Wood and its huts, made by Miguel Elliott of Living Earth Structures, has raised $22,000 with the hopes of expanding into residential cabins. Leger Harper has been living in an RV on the Wood Street encampment for seven years with her dog, Brucie. She now runs the Cobb on Wood communal kitchen. We can be empowered to do things ourselves and not have to lean so much on the outside community. But while Cobb on Wood has been a bright spot for some, there's talk on site that people will be kicked out of the encampment as the land is owned by the California Department of Transportation. In fact, Moreno says several families have already been removed to clear the road. Caltrans, which confirmed in local media reports that Cobb on Wood is safe for now, did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Councilmember Carol Fife says the situation at Wood Street is, quote, untenable for housed and unhoused residents in the district, adding, my office is also helping to open up a conversation between Cobb on Wood and Caltrans so that we are working on one agenda with the best intentions for the district as our guide. Lamonte Ford has also been living on Wood Street for years. He says he came here because local police said he could park his RV in the encampment and be left alone. Now he says he feels betrayed by the city as he may have to leave. If you need us to do it in a different way, then tell us which way you'd like it to be done. But please give us a break. We have nowhere else to go. Anywhere between 150 and 300 residents live here in this community and organizers say they want a seat at the table with Caltrans and they're hoping to halt the eviction. Chef? Kate, thanks. West Oakland could represent both the, the history and the pride of the black majority that lives in West Oakland and the history of the Black Panthers, which we still feel strongly today because of their belief in survival programs and um, cooperative community and uh, basically uh, saving your own community. Like what we're doing right here right now is trying to save this small seed of cooperative community. Like the Bottoms is the place where we had our first organizational meetings in uh, March. Mm -hmm. And we self-organized from within. And uh, now we face potential eviction by the city of Oakland at the Bottoms here. Uh, between July 1st and 9th and the people living in this far stretch of 29 acres under the freeways and maybe everywhere are subject to eviction uh, by Caltrans. So we're facing Caltrans and the city at the same time and we're mobilizing anyone and everyone to embrace it, this place mm -hmm. as their commons that if you can't protect the commons here this movement might be suppressed or delayed. But I believe that the commons is the third leg of society, that you've got capitalism, you've got the state. But the only way to generate cooperative community is by design and by social contract and having a land trust where you seize the land, mm -hmm. the people within the city limits. And so that's the start of our introduction. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Sue. Hi, how you doing? Um, I'm having the best time of my life here at the Wood Street Commons. Um, but uh, I wanted to explain the story about this Cobb bench. Um, it represents a kind of reconciliation or attempt between the, the black people of indigenous to West Oakland and the homeless people that are at the Wood Street Commons and then all the non-homeless people living out in the community who uh, 
came into the homeless area and built the Kabanwood village. And some indigenous people here felt that that was an, uh, colonialism all over again, that the, the rich housed people would see, oh, there's free land, we can do what we want, and we can help the homeless. Like the other agencies which use the vast amounts of homeless money to create a homeless industrial complex where they mm -hmm. can be kind of living comfortably while the homeless problem never gets better, but they keep serving it or you know, taking their peace. So our, one of our leaders here, Lamonte, who uh, was not having this invasion and was very um, suspicious about the motivations of the people at Kaban Wood, and Miguel, who's an elder white male, who is a master builder of Cobb, uh, wanted to be friends and do something collaborative with Lamonte, but Lamonte was not open to that. But we brokered a, a deal right here, and they both agreed to build this bench together. And the two of them, with a little help from me, built this bench. And it was a sweet moment of friendship and accord. One, two, three. Hi, my name is Lamonte. Hi, Lamonte. And I'm from the <laughs> Wood Street Commons um, here in the Lower Bottoms. Uh, and it's very tough out here. It is. Um, there's a lot of people, though, that come and visit us that gives uh, love back to us, gives humanity back to us. For those of you that are out there watching this, that have that heart, please continue to do what you're doing because an act of kindness can change and alter the state of mind of a man and a woman. It can correct things, it can heal things. So we really appreciate you guys that do come out and do what you can, even in the simplest of ways. Coming down to say hello, <laughs> we really appreciate that. Uh, so, so far, uh, I just completed an application for my 501c3 so that we could have our own um, nonprofit organization right here, employed by us, for us, um, where us, if needed, can come and find um, housing, safe sanctuary, um, under the terms of how it is now um, because everyone should be met on their level mm -hmm. so if their level is sleeping on a cardboard then we need to reach them on cardboard go sit with them on cardboard find out what their needs may be for us not to do those things would be for us to denounce our human humanity Be human means a lot to me. It means that uh, we're all connected. I mean, if you think about evolution or creation, it speaks about this invisible stuff in between us. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even spirituality. Mm -hmm. Well, that invisible stuff is our energy. As we pass a fellow human, it is our obligation to do what we can trade energy. That's how we survive. If we lose that, we lose humanity. We lose the right. It is a right. We lose the right to exist. So keep coming out. I'm Monte. Thank you. No worries. Base. Let's say it again. Okay. Lamonte was just mentioning that <laughs> one size does not fit all in terms of social spacing at a village or a commons. And some people like to be closer together, more social, and other people need more space because of their whatever healing or issues or personality type they are. Mm -hmm. So we, with tiny homes, people have the flexibility to adjust their social distance from each other in the village uh, floor plan. Mm -hmm. Or they can move to another cluster village elsewhere because this space is so vast. When we succeed in owning this land in a trust or licensing it from Caltrans from our trust, land trust, we can have a lot of space here potentially, 29 or more acres on the dirt where we can have our feet on soil. 
and grow food and regenerate this soil, which has had a rough life of its own. It has. <laughs> the soil yeah. has had a rough life. And the people here have are the ultimate survivors. They bring so much educational skills about how to survive that a lot of people who are going to be newly homeless will need the education in order to not freak out and die or be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So figuring out these issues about so how far to space people, or they will naturally space themselves if we have enough space to play with. And it's not a regimented thing if everybody is in rows a certain six feet apart and, yeah, and, and become true. just lost in their drug addiction and pain because they don't have space to move freely and see living things or have their feet in the soil or be responsible for growing things or be able to make their own shelter or make something that's inexpensive. $1,000, $3,000, $5,000, we can get you something that will maybe work for years for you. And you were building uh, shared infrastructure so that people share showers, they share other resources and utilities. So they have to get out of their tiny home to be social and to partake in the survival that we share. The survival brings us together. It's like it, it, it cuts across all racial lines. It's like, I need Monte. I need Lamonte. Lamonte needs me. We need I each do. other just to, to do this incredible ordeal of facing both Caltrans and the city of Oakland biggest eviction in the history of California or America, we are facing the biggest potential um, social question. Are we going to go with the old model of fixing homelessness, where you're supposed to get assimilated back into the housing marketplace, where you're going to be back in your consumer isolated shell, worried about money every day of your life, and never able to get ahead in your small business or your art, because now the arts are going to shit, sorry. The housing prices are so high in the Bay Area, people are in stress. They're being driven crazy mm -hmm. by a system that is seemingly designed to depopulate us. Mm -hmm. So this amount of land and the people that have been here five, seven, eight, ten years, and this place has a legacy. West Oakland has a legacy of the Black Panthers trying to protect the community. Self community self-defense is where we're at right now. Like. We needed to protect this cooperative community because I came here for cooperative community because I could not make it in the standard world. Mm -hmm. And I'm skilled. I'm college educated. I'm from upper middle class. White privilege up to here. And I could not make it in that world. Mm -hmm. And when I go out of the boundaries of this beautiful place and I go out there, I can't wait to get back. I don't want to be living that way. And it, if I can't make it with cooperative community here, I don't know what I'll do, except if they, this is the day, this is the D-day of our lives. What would you say to, about our strategy or our hopes right now? Um, as far as right privilege goes, um, <laughs> I guess I've been privy to say that I have black privilege because I stayed in Claremont. <laughs> <laughs> I leave my door open. I oh. still here while homeless. Leave my keys in the ignition because I don't know any better. Um, college educated, um, and yet I'm still here. So that says a lot for the perils of everyday life. Yes. Um, but what Theo is saying is correct. I think that um, community areas or commune areas mm -hmm. are very important. These cookie cutter homes that are being prepared and built are like more like stable coffins. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, I understand how it is to be inside. I've been inside. I actually was wealthy. Uh, so, if people want to live like this, we should give them the opportunity to live like this better though yeah like this with resources yes right the last thing you want to do to a person that you see on the street is to shun that person oh, yeah. is to make them feel unwanted in their own community mm -hmm. because that person probably would be the first one to save you in their your our community mm -hmm. I hope you guys caught that um, and they are bleeding that community just like you. Don't shun them. You yeah. could perpetuate the problem. Yeah. See if you could assist them. Look at this. I mean, it looks like it's trash, right? 
That's because we have lack of resources. Yes. If we had the resources, you see my house back there? Look at Mate's house. I built that house. It's oh it's, wow. It's multiple. You know, it's, that's a fighting chicken back there. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! I appeared one day and I was like, was that there before? No. Creativity is elves or something. See, so things like that are lost in uh, everyday living um, mm -hmm. in apartments yes. and I am so against apartments and condos. Yes, sir. The reason being is that you would think that you would be tighter with your neighbors, right? No. Because you're in a tighter space. It doesn't work that way. Tighter space means that you don't get to see them that often except for in transit to your space. Um, you never see artwork like that because people are not free to do those things. Yes. Um, to grow, to landscape. Yes. Here, this is our last stronghold. Yes. We need places like this because it gives hope. It gives the people out there a place, a safe place to come. Um, and we're getting people in daily. Imagine them out there by themselves, with no support, in How, the cold. Excuse me. How many people are staying here now? Um, anywhere between two, anywhere between eighty to two hundred. Wow. And that number fluctuates too, because you know we've we've got a lot of floaters. Like mm -hmm. I'm talking about these individuals um, that are out there lost by themselves. It's very difficult for them. They need spaces like this because. Number one, probably they're um, afflicted by some type of abuse, mm -hmm. right? Coupled with substance abuse, mm -hmm. some mental psychosis, mm -hmm. some just lost, and if they are lost, they still have psychosis. They have damage. Yeah. So they don't want to be around what society would say is the norm. Mm -hmm. They want to come where they can just sit and rest mm -hmm. without judgment. Yes. Places like this affords them that. Mm -hmm. um, Blaine came here and he was really distraught. He came from the tiny home situation and he felt... And when you say the tiny home situation, are you talking about those sheds they've yes. put under the freeway? Which we yeah. Don't, uh, not yeah. a suitable example of what no. we're trying to do. It's not at all. Um, not at all. Not even close. It's I think we have a camp. more harm-reduced method. Um, if, if given the opportunity, we can show you what to do with the homeless. Yes. We are the homeless. Mm -hmm. And it can be beneficial for all parties concerned. Yes. For the neighbors, yes. for us, yes. um, and for the ones coming in. Yes. We just need the opportunity. We need people yes. like Theo and his mm -hmm. fire and determination in places just like this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What's your name? Sue. And we need people like Sue. <laughs> yeah. Getting out this information. That's it's right. very important. I just met her today. Um, <laughs> But I can feel her drive as well. Uh, so hopefully you guys are listening to her channel. Subscribe! <laughs> that's, it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh! You want us out of the way? What the hell does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, are we just gonna like, when we're gone? Trail of tears! It's really, um, it's really sad because now, you know, there, there are folks that are trying to be out here and be proactive and really work with the community because we're neighbors and we ain't going nowhere. We've been here, most of us, our whole lives. You know, I was born at Kaiser, right down the street. That building's gone now. They knocked, they knocked my birthplace down. But, um, you know, we need to really be... We pay Caltrans, don't we not? On our tax money, we pay Caltrans. So it's us that really can, can say like what we want and what we don't want. And I'm tired of Caltrans telling us whatever the fuck they think we want to hear, just to make it as freaking, like once we started cleaning up and we made a really big like dent in all the construction garbage that gets dumped on us and all the clean out garbage and shit. And we made a difference. And then on Monday, they told us, do not clean anymore. You're not certified to clean. Right, cease and desist were their actual words. Like, so you don't want us to clean up. You know, they just want us to clean. They just want us to clean. They just want to fucking tell us whatever we want to hear for the moment. Because they really don't care about us, and that's not right. You know what I'm saying? 
what's the alternative? Where are we gonna go? Where do we go? You know what I'm saying? Like, help us out with that. I'm sure, like I said, the, the neighbors in the, the street, the homeowners aren't gonna be too happy once the flood of, they per the newspaper, Wood Street is the biggest encampment in Oakland. So you're gonna cut us down, I mean, close us down, and then we're flooding the street. <laughs> Flooding the streets of Oakland, so you know that's that's not not what you want, right? So I mean, if we can pump it back up, right? We want support, not sweets, right? Yeah. Support, not sweets. Support, support, not sweets. Support, not sweets. Support, not sweets. Right? Support, not sweets. organizations that are already been out here that have been supporting homelessness and unhoused residents of Oakland yeah. continue to fund those programs give us money that deserve to us like the Emerald New Deal that money that we tax money needs to come back into the communities people. that have been affected by the war on drugs yes. give us more money. Give us more productive, successful members of the society you know